Hi there YouTube and makers, and welcome back to my channel. Thank you for spending your time with me and joining me today. On this installment, I'm going to be working on the alignment jig to insert my journal bearings into the three jaw chuck, as well as machining a few journal bearings to length. Originally in the book, Kozo Hiroka demonstrates aligning the journal bearings in the chuck by utilizing the reamer in the tailstock and then inserting the reamer into the chuck and tightening down the chuck. While in discussion with some of the journeyman machinists, this was kind of described to me as not great practice and not preferable. So one of the things that I set out to do was to make an alignment jig to go in the tailstock and then to insert my journal bearings into the three jaw chuck. Now, what I found out in a couple of bearings that I tried using the reamer is that I was consistently getting marks left behind from the cutting flutes from the reamer all going all the way around the inside of the journal bearings. And I didn't really care for that, so I don't think it's a great practice. And it basically confirmed my prejudice that it was a bad idea or bad practice to use a reamer as an alignment jig. So here I'm going to be demonstrating making the jig. And the jig is very simple. You know, at this point I've made an arbor to hold tender wheels. I've made axle, I made the axles, which also have a step down end that mates to the journal bearings as well as a, a shoulder that mates to the tender wheels so it's very similar operations that I'll be repeating. In this instance I'll be using a piece of rim but in all fairness I have a fair quantity of scrapped axles. So this is also a perfect place to use up some scrapped axles as well as get a little bit more practice and really dial in my skills. I have no place but to admit that it wasn't the machine, it wasn't my cutters, it was me. And as, the old, and as in many cases, the problem lies in with the nut behind the hand wheel. Be sure to stay to the end of the video so that you don't miss today's journeyman tip of the day. As well as, be sure to hit the subscribe button as well as a bell notification so you never miss another one of my videos. And if you end up finding that you enjoy the video, please hit the like button. As well as, feel free to share and comment below. Commenting is a great way for us to interact and I do enjoy your comments and do find them quite useful. Now, with all that out of the way, Come over here and join me at the bench and let's make some chips. Admittedly, I've been struggling a little bit with my axles, particularly the ends. I can seem to do the first one, but I don't know what it is. I lose count or what, or overdo it. I keep uh, taking a little bit too much off the bearing surface. So I've got quite a few of these uh, scrapped axles. For those of you astute observers, you'll see notice that this one's a bit shiny on the on the inside of the chuck. That's just because I've been practicing and having my way with these axles, I'm trying to figure out my speeds and feeds and dialing it. I'm getting better, not great, but I'm getting better. So took a little cut off. Now I'm going to check where I'm at. It's about 42 thousands left to go. It's not bad. Yeah. Take some more cuts off of this with the carbide here. And we're going in about 10 thousandths. Took a little bit of a back cut there. 
No harm, no foul. Boy, Let's see what I'm reading at. So good, another twelve thousand to go. So we we'll go ahead and use a carbide and split off another half of that. Well, twelve thousand off the diameter, six thousandths off the radius. Checking the temp, it's not great. So I'm going to go ahead and clean up and kind of still in the experimenting phase. And I, this is only about the second time I want to say I probably use the uh, steel inserts. So using this little tray because these fidgety, fidgety, itty bitty little screws are just not good to lose. But take a moment to clean. It's actually quite dirty. Quite a lot of that bron phosphor bronze got in underneath there. Surprised. So, I've got my high speed steel insert. I'm going to finish off with that. And here I'm using the journeyman tip to kind of just touch off. And I'm re zeroing my hand wheel. And I'm going to take another measurement and see where I'm at. And I can see that since it cooled down a little, just changed ever so slightly. Now I'm going to take a skim cut after zeroing, but I think I went in a little too far and touching off. Should not have removed that much. But this high speed seal is amazing. It just takes it off like it's not even there. But So I took my pressure cut and not much came off. So let's see where I am at. A little worried about taking that uh, skim cut in the beginning. I didn't expect that much to be coming off. So we'll see what is going on here. I'm a little under by three ten thousandths. So I had ran my cutter in one touching off a little bit too close. But I want to see how that turns out. So I would have to polish it with emery cloth or something to make sure it fits the uh, bearings. So I'm gonna take a heavy, heavily uh, file the end of it so those bearings can slip on a little bit cleaner. There's plenty of shank left on there. And right in. I want a nice taper to slide those bearings on. Get off any chips on my hand. It's a little warm, but not too hard, I don't think. Let's see where I'm at. Not bad. Pretty tight fit. I'm not feeling a lot of play. You'll notice there's quite a bit of a, a burr on the end from that rear cutoff wheel. The rear cutoff tool left a pretty sizable burr, as you can see on this bearing. But I found a kind of a nit, nit, nifty little deburring tool at my local home improvement store, you know, the one with the blue logo, that works pretty well. So I took it, nipped it right off, and then I'm going to measure here real quick. And as you see, overall length is 0.2915 about. Oh, great. That's <laughs> That's going to be about 45 minutes. So after finding a bearing, now I can insert it into the tool I just made and tighten in a chug and it seems to work pretty well. Not too stiff, not too firm and give myself a good bit of uh, material left to stay well clear and take off that 20 thousandths. I'm gonna touch off here. Change the angle a little bit to be a bit clear. So just barely touch off and zero my hand wheel. I'm gonna bring it in and just gonna go for it. Boom, 20,000. Oh, 21, 22 ish. Now. So hopefully I did it right, but I'm gonna have to stick to the end to see if I did or not. Now, doing this internal chamfer, I found that I needed to change the orientation. And, um, the way I'm doing it now is much, much better, in which the tool holder has about 
even amounts of sides are sticking out over the uh, cross light table and it gives a much better finish and much better angle and it's more consistent so I'm just going to go in touch off bring in about a couple, few thousandths I think I'm running three thousandths on mine and it gets every single one pretty consistent so here it is did I do it? did I underdo it? did the journeyman work for me? and it kind of looks like it did so it's on the 50 plus 20 that's 70 and my 10 thou lines up pretty good with the zero not bad I'm happy about that good bearing to start to go so today's journeyman tip of the day has to do with tool holder and in particular tool holder insert maintenance in a previous review video I had of AR Warner, I had a fact, factory induced problem in which the screw head twisted off of the carbide, when I was installing the carbide insert into a brand new tool holder I had never used. While kind of discussing my problem and trying to come up with a fix with the journeyman tool and die maker, we kind of came up with a few solutions that I could do on my own to get it out in case I didn't get any help from Air Warner. But luckily, Little Machine Shop came to the rescue and supplied me with a replacement set. But in that discussion, he talked about tool maintenance and, ins and insert maintenance on various tool holders. And in his experience, if I don't maintain my tool holders, it will induce a similar problem. And it occurs due to vibrations and heat and just general use of a tool holder and, and inserts. And the screw can tighten out. And in his experience, he's, he has had screws just twist off while unscrewing them and applying very little force. So to combat getting into that problem and from trashing any more tool holders, in this instance due to use, the journeyman tool and die maker gave me some great advice on how to maintain my tool holders, which I'll share with you now. A little bit of preventive maintenance goes a long way to ensuring a long, useful life out of my cutting tools and holders. In this instance, I'm going to be applying a little bit of anti seize to the little screws on this AR work. Now, the problem you see to the right was entirely factory induced. and had, might have been an issue between the screw size as well as the carbide insert. So I'm going to apply a little bit of anti-seize. No particular brand. It's just whatever I have lying around from the last time I did my brakes. and I'm going to wipe off the excess. A little goes a long way and gets all over my fingers and seems to just penetrate every single pore and groove. Go ahead and mount my high-speed steel cutter insert. Make sure all the surfaces are nice and clean, no chips have gotten in there. I'm going to carefully and delicately stick it in there with these little itty bitty tweezers. I seem to have purloined from someplace. And just going to hopefully screw it down without knocking everything out of place and losing it in a mass of chips. Nice and snug, not too, too tight. Don't want to overdo it and end up snapping off another screw head. That is today's journeyman tip of the day. So that you never miss another installment of my build on the Koza Hiroka, Pennsylvania A3 switcher, steam locomotive engine in a 040 configuration, in three quarter inch scale to run on a three and a half inch gauge track. Be sure to hit that subscribe button as well as a bell notification so you never miss one of the video posts. Likewise, if you enjoyed today's journeyman tip of the day or anything that I shared with you today, please be sure to hit that like button. As well as share my videos with anyone you feel like might be interested. And please, comment below. I enjoy the interaction and I enjoy the opportunity to hear from you. And it's a great way for me to learn from you and to kind of interact on in another way besides these videos. Now, for a little bit of housekeeping, I am trying to build up a Facebook, Pinterest, and Instagram. And I should be able to be found on Lloyd Precision Makers 
it's not running smoothly because I haven't been able to devote too much time to it. I have begun to post pictures there. So I'm trying to take some glory photos and really good photographs of some of the stuff I'm doing that gives it, it provides a little bit more clarity and a better view of the outcome of some of this machining because it doesn't always come out in a video as, as well as it could in a um, static photograph. Likewise, I'm working on developing that arbor or holding fixture for ma finishing machining these bearings and I'm going to try to do some sort of PDF or drawing and a video is not a great place to post that I don't think so I'll post some sort of the plans or dimensions for that on one of those feeds so be sure to check me out there and follow along if you're into that are into using those resources on my next installment I'll be working on machining that holding fixture as well as finishing machining these journal bearings and if you're interested in any of the tools I've demonstrated using today or my Sherline Lane, I've got links below with, to where you can find your own and get a little bit more information on these tools. Thank you so much for watching my video today. I really appreciate you spending your time with me. Till next time, stay safe, have fun out there, and keep making chips.